Hi, I'm Sean Fink, and this is my story about becoming an accidental entrepreneur 11 years ago, and how it all started with one desire, to be something more. Let's start at the beginning and how my entrepreneurial spirit was taking shape all along, even if it wasn't obvious or intentional. In 1974, my teenage parents made the deliberate choice to have a baby. This was my first home, a trailer that sat on the edge of my paternal grandfather's farm. It wasn't much of a house, but my mom did her best to make it a home. But the truth was, things weren't great inside those walls, and change was needed. When I was five, my mom swept me off the bus, one bus stop early, and piled me on top of all of our belongings in the back seat of our car to escape my abusive, alcoholic father, who was sitting in his car, waiting for me at my regular bus stop. I remember passing him, a sliding doors moment for a five-year-old. We landed that day at my maternal grandparents' house, sharing a set of bunk beds in the bedroom of their one-floor home set on 50 acres of creeks and woods, an idyllic setting that became my playground and safe fortress for the rest of my childhood. It was there in that house I learned the value of imagination, possibility, and going for it. That's where my best friend Marianne and I often played superheroes while climbing trees and building forts. We even played this game on our family's farm, and one day I bravely scaled a stone wall of their barn while she dropped her end of the flimsy jump rope and I fell into a huge pit of manure. It was around that time I began finding my voice and started recording my first professional podcast. I was eight. It was called Ralph the Bear. I recorded it in the spare bedroom of my grandparents' house on their old cassette tape recorder. Once I discovered my love of storytelling, I never stopped telling stories from any part of my life. As a child with an active imagination, writing became my outlet, my therapy, my best friend, and a way to express myself and to understand the world. I still write and journal daily and attribute this practice to how I've managed to skip therapy and be a fairly well-adjusted human in this crazy world. In addition to writing and podcasting as a child, I reluctantly share that I also gave pretend speaking performances when no one was around. I dreamed of delivering a powerful, passionate speech to a room full of strangers who smiled and, strained and cheered me on while I entertained them usually about a book I had written. With writing as my only real passion, I went to college and became a journalist for the first decade of my adult life, a career that taught me about life, humanity, and what it takes to write on deadline after a 15-hour day of interviewing distraught, grieving strangers and even murderers. Journalism made me braver than I ever dreamed I could be. Being a reporter brought me to York, where I met my now husband, Dan, we married and brought twin daughters into the world 17 years ago. It was their birth that resurrected my creativity and passion for possibility. Never one to be just one thing, I shoved a journal in the diaper bag and carried it with me everywhere. But motherhood was also really lonely. The year the girls were born, my entire family began migrating south to Georgia from that wooded property I grew up on. I experienced deep grief and anger at their choices to move so far away when I needed them most. Feeling unmoored, I began seeking inspiration from the online world, and that's when I took my first course. I was fascinated by how people were making money with their writing online. I started studying the industry and taught myself to create websites, write blog posts, and develop camp marketing campaigns. I grew a Facebook page to 40,000 followers, and that's when I started making friends around the world. When our girls were three, while working in a job that was not the best fit for my creativity or passion, I began getting up early and writing every day as a creative outlet. That led to my first experience of my writing going viral online. I met the early morning hours with excitement and joy and then dragged myself to work. My friend, Kim Walsh Phillips, and I often met for lunch back then, and I shared my wild, impossible dream of wanting to earn a living by writing online. She began mentoring me and was the first person to tell me I was doing something called content marketing. And I remember saying to her, how can I make money doing this? The laugh was on me. A few months later, I started an online email challenge, and 400 people from around the world signed up. And I, I remember Kim saying, great work, but what are you going to sell to them? I was clueless. Sales were a foreign concept to me, but I quickly wrote an ebook in a week, published it, and sold it for a few dollars. 
and that was my first product and how I became an accidental entrepreneur. I went on to build a six-figure coaching business offering online programs, a membership community, and powerful weekend retreats. I also started a real podcast and began doing a lot of, yes, speaking on stage. All of these small break steps led to a business empire that changed my life and the lives of women all over the world. And then in 2020, after eight years of business confidence and a bad case of the midlife X, I closed that business down and launched a business coaching program in 2021. I rebranded my podcast to highlight my experience with taking risks. I've rebuilt my audience, my body of work, and leaned into a brave yes mindset. I've run my business solely through online platforms, including Zoom, long before Zoom became a household name. In those early years, I struggled to explain who I was and what I did. Thanks to the pandemic, I no longer cringe when people ask me what I do for a living. I help highly creative entrepreneurs turn wild ideas into purpose and prosperity. As it turns out, none of these 11 years were accidental. It took a lot of waking up early and putting in the time, a lot of uh, visioning and actualizing. It took a lot of planning and hard work and failure. It took a lot of imagination, and mostly it took a lot of trust and courage. I've now built two successful businesses based on wild ideas, and I help other visionary thought leaders and entrepreneurs around the world turn their visions into thriving businesses. They come to me with a blob of ideas and a longing to do something more, and we turn it into a business empire, but then with intention and purpose, not accidentally.